Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and today we have an update on the Russia collusion hoax. Some interesting things happened in the last week or two regarding the Durham investigation. So, SD, why don't you tell us what happened? There was a February 11th filing in the Durham investigation that's prompted many on the right to allege that what Special Prosecutor John Durham is uncovering is worse than Watergate. The filing had to do with a potential conflict of interest for, law for lawyers representing Michael Sussman. You may recall that he was the most recent person to be indicted in the Durham investigation. So the meat of the story, as reported by Fox, is that lawyers for the Clinton campaign paid a technology company to infiltrate servers belonging to Trump Tower and later the White House in order to establish an inference and narrative to bring to government agencies linking Donald Trump to Russia, a filing from special counsel John Durham found. So basically what that means is Hillary Clinton's tech guy, who was also supposed to eventually serve in her administration once she won, created a fake digital trail from Trump Tower to Russia to, in essence, frame Donald Trump and create the digital trail, if you will, that made it look like he was guilty. So that would make it easy for Hillary's friends in the FBI, like Andy McCabe, whose wife ran for Senate unsuccessfully, and who Hillary Clinton's political action committee gave her a bunch of money when she was running. And so it's like all these people know each other and they're all working together. And so they can go, oh, look, there's a digital trail going from Trump Tower to Russia, which is, you know, it's created by her, her tech people. That's amazing that they can do that. Yeah. And so anybody in law enforcement, whether they're on Hillary's team or not, can look at that and go, well, there is a digital trail there. We don't know what it is, but OK, well, we want to we we go to the judge and we go, hey, there's this digital trail going back to Russia. It's I know this dude's running for president, but that looks pretty bad. Are there laws against that? And well, yeah, that's basically spying on your political candidate. And then the thing is, is that this was going started when he was running for president and it continued after he was sworn in. So Hillary Clinton and her associates were all spying on the sitting president of the United States. I don't care. It's fucking high treason. You cannot spy on the president of the United States, no matter who it is, whether you like him or not, and be, oh, that's that's fine. That doesn't work. That's not how that's there. There's number one, it's not honorable. Number two, it's totally illegal. That's what you go to jail for life for, or you get a firing squad. So what's happening uh legality wise? Is someone pushing so to prosecute? The, so what it means is Durham has gone to the court to request discovery because he's come across this digital trail from more of the people involved in this. And so that means that they want to have the court order to, to look into the people that were doing this. There are probably their emails, any kind of digital trail or paper trail or communications, phone records. Anything like that, I assume even going to people's offices and confiscating records so they can look through them. So it's like peeling the layers of an onion. It's just, I mean, the wheels of justice turn so slowly. And like I was saying in the original, when we went through the whole Russia collusion hoax thing, is that by the time all this stuff finally works its way through, it might take a decade. So by the time all these people get prosecuted and charged and... I mean, from the time that this stuff, the Durham investigation happened until it's finished and everybody's prosecuted, it'd be a decade. I mean, at Hillary's age, she'll probably be dead by then, just of, of old age. And uh, these people, uh, the, most of the people hear about it, it would be something that happened a decade ago and they wouldn't even care. But it's like they, they got away with this and they just completely hamstrung Trump's administration all through those four years with this whole fake thing that, oh, he's a, you know, he's a Russian Manchurian candidate. Yeah. And a, a couple of things with this one is like just noticing how much or how little media is covering it, but that speaks a lot. Lying um, through omission. 
Yeah, and also just one, there's the people that almost just tune it out, right? This is something that's clearly a big deal and a lot of people tune it out where the people that care, like what's their faith in the justice system actually doing anything meaningful about it, right? Like that speaks a lot to where our justice system's at and just where like our trust in politics is at. Like it's, I think most people know that there's a lot of shady stuff going on in politics and we actually just accept it. Like that's a norm. Like that's just how it is. Right. And it's like, it's like we've been programmed to have such a low standard. And like yeah, we've the, just been beat down as a country. Yeah, like, Oh yeah. They're all a bunch of criminals. Yeah, well, like, oh, well, what can you do? And about to be it? fair, it's not just the U S it's not like, you know, it's, it's going so great. You know, like we were talking about the Ukrainian government, but just like politics around the world, the standard is so low. And, uh, that, that's like a, just a big, big of a story that no one's going to talk about, right? Or another way to look at it is <laughs> this shit's always been going on. This is the same as it yeah. ever was. It's always been this way, but because of social media and the fact that there are ways to get the information. Because there, what I've found over the years studying this stuff is that there are reporters all over the world that are really competent and really good and really trustworthy. And they almost always get things right. And when they're wrong, they're like, hey, I fucked up here and I was wrong about this. Yeah. And over the years, it's like you really because I spent a lot of time on Twitter and I'll start following somebody and they'll be good. And then you're like, ah, or this turns out to be bullshit. And oh, as the years go by, you start to accumulate more and more people who when they say something, it's pretty much almost always right. And you can kind of take it to the bank. And then you see other people in the mainstream media, like the the Jake Tappers or the yeah. Anderson Coopers of the world, the people that are just, you know, you could they see what they want to see. And even when they're wrong, they never typically go back and apologize for being wrong. It's just there. And, but for me, somebody that watches the news is like, I'll still listen to what they have to say, but I really assume that it's probably bullshit. Yeah. And cause their trust is the hardest thing to get and the easiest thing to lose. And we got somebody constantly lying to you. You start to realize that you can't really, you can listen to what they got to say, but you're, you're not really going to give much weight to the, the evidence. Because, I mean, all of us are just trying to figure out what the hell's going on in the world. That's I want to know what's going on. I want to know what the truth is. Because if you don't know what's true, you can't resist. Because you don't even know what reality is. If you don't know, you don't have an accurate picture on reality, It's you don't know who's controlling you or fucking you over. Because these people all kind of work in the shadows. The Davos crowd, you know. These guys decide all these things and, you know, their little cocktail meetings and country club meetings and their little get togethers, their kids birthday parties and all this shit on their, you know, as they cruise around the world in their Gulfstream jets and lecture the rest of us about climate change. And we should lower our carbon footprint when they have the largest carbon footprints in the world, but they feel entitled to it. Just like when John Kerry, when everybody's like, well, why are you flying on? He's like, why? Well, the work I do, I need to have a jet and I need to have access to you know, in other words, I'm better than all you. I'm more important than all you. And so who cares about my carbon footprint? I'm saving the planet. Yeah. And uh, something else like so like this kind of news, right? There's there's people that pay attention to it and understand it, but they don't come off as like a like a paranoid conspiracy theorist. Right. And then there's other people. They'll be like, oh, in the Durham investigation and just like people automatically tune them out. There's something missing. Um with those people where like they might be looking into stuff that people should be paying attention to, but like you can actually read into the stuff that the, uh, the media doesn't cover without like going off the deep end and, and, and being so unrelatable where like when you do talk about this stuff, people just think you're some crazy like Trump supporter and they don't even actually give you uh they don't even give you any like credibility to what you're saying, you know? So there's like a balance between there too, that, that like, I think people don't realize they think, cause like, I remember for the longest time, <clears throat> this was before I, I started getting into like the geo geopolitical stuff. Every time I heard the Durham investigation, and a lot of times it was on like Fox news or something, I would just tune out, I would just tune out. Like, <laughs> like there's like some kind of association with it that I just didn't even like, I didn't even want to, I just didn't even want to hear it, right? And and um, I think part of the reason why this isn't getting more attention is because a lot of people actually just, just relate to it that way. 
Well, I've seen a lot of people on the left and their attitude is they're just dismissive about it. Oh, it's a, it's corrupt because it was uh, Barr, the former Trump's attorney, yeah. handpicked attorney general, put this illegal invest. I mean, they basically have the same perception of it that the Republicans had of the Mueller investigation. Yeah. And so no, they're like, and even people, you see it on Twitter, all these blue check mark people are like, it doesn't matter what Durham finds, I, it's all BS and it's just a setup. He's just a, a Trump crony. And Durham was one of the few people in the Justice Department that has for decades had an impeccable record of credibility. And the interesting thing is that there's no leaks. There's no nothing leaking out about what Durham is doing other than what he once put out. But like the Mueller investigation, there was all kinds of shit that was turning up in the media because there were people that were working in the investigation that were feeding their friends in the New York Times stuff that they were uncovering or it was an investigation just because it would make Trump and his people look bad. But it's not happening with Durham. Yeah, like And it. then that pisses the Republicans off because they're like, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. But I mean, he's just methodically slowly following where the evidence leads. And now he's got the evidence of the digital paper trail and he's got the people involved. And so now he's going to the court saying, we, we want to discover, we want to be able to see where this leads. We want to be able to subpoena people and interview them and seize their records if need be. And is that going to happen? I don't know. I don't, well, I would assume it is. It seems like some of the judges, uh, some you know the the law tends to sway depending on which judge is looking at it true and how important they they want it to be or not but like i said it's it yeah. might be a decade before we finally i mean it, it's possible that trump runs in 20 well he says he's going to run 2024 gets elected stays until 2028 obviously and then you know somebody else will be running and he could be out of office for several years by the time this shit finally gets finished. And by then, it's like you're 10, 15 years after the event. Most people are like, what? They don't even care. Hillary Clinton, no, she died five years ago. You know, like people will have moved on. The world won't even, the younger generation won't even know what the hell it is or what they're talking about. Yeah, another thing to notice is just like the difference in media coverage. Right? So like you've like flipped the story, right? And it was Trump and there's people actually doing this to Hillary's campaign. <laughs> It'd be 24, 24 <laughs> 7 they'd be talking about or, it. Uh, or if it was like... Uh, they'd put him in jail first. What's his, what's his son? Donald Trump Jr. was like Hunter Biden. And like all those videos came out. Oh, they had videos like, of him smoking crack. What, 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 like what would, what would the coverage be like, right? Like just like just, just being honest. <laughs> that's right? what, that's so yeah. crazy when you see those videos. The crack pie, him in the underwear, the stuff with him and the hookers. Yeah. And, and yeah. you're like thinking... And then some of the audio, the weird things that go on in his family and stuff. And you're like... Yeah. And oh yeah, the media even, just is, hmm? yeah. Even the even oh, the that's emails. Russian disinformation. Yeah, like the emails from like Ukraine, right? Like about like his like Biden getting special like perks if you know he connects him to his dad, all, all that stuff. Ten percent for the big guy. There was like nothing. There was just there was there was nothing, you know. And no, he literally uh, said that ten percent. Hey, don't yeah. forget ten percent. Ten percent for the big guy, meaning yeah. Joe Biden. So what would happen is Hunter would would do these things and get his father to do things. And then the people would pay Hunter Biden, and then Hunter Biden would pay yeah. Joe Biden's bills. Yeah, there's, there's that's like, how they got around the um, you know Joe Biden get paid off directly. Yeah, and there's like emails yeah, and all the stuff. Yeah, do that. Yeah, like that's out there. And this stuff was out there. They had the laptop Nothing. and everything. Yeah, Hunter Biden. They literally had Hunter Biden's laptop. And what? And so when that? you talk, well, when you talked about it during the election, there was all the social media companies were yeah. deleting your posts yeah. and blocking people and banning people for it saying that they were posting yeah. uh, hacked information or uh, yeah, misinformation yeah, get, about the election. You get fact-checked, too. Yeah, you get fact exactly. Check and, yeah, it's... and then now the media is just like, oh, yeah, well, the laptop was, oh, but, you know, it's no big deal. And they just, so they t they mention it, but they don't really go into detail of what was on Yeah, and if I, and I remember, uh, remember, I think Joe Biden just came out, had like, it's like, my son is like, like one of the kindest, most intelligent person I know. You know He's just a like, crackhead. Just pray for him during this tough time, and then, like, they just stopped covering it. And that was that was it. It was it was very different than like you know let, let's just say it was Donald Trump Jr. doing the same thing. Yeah, it's 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 very bizarre. Thank you for your feedback. <laughs> okay, thanks for stopping by. We're well, going back into the story. 
The development prompted the Wall Street Journal editorial board to run an article with the headline, Trump really was spied on. Durham, Durham says techies linked to the Clinton campaign had access to White House and Trump Tower internet data. Reacting to the revelation, Texas Senator Ted Cruz stated on Fox News that people need to go to jail. So Trump has been saying, I've been spied, I'm getting spied on, I'm getting spied on for years, right? I think part of the reason why people don't take him seriously is because he just shoots from the hip and says a bunch of bullshit, right? So like... It's hyperbole. Yeah, just like, oh, like this election was rigged. Like if you have a history of just like being not so grandiose with what you say and just... Just he's like, cried wolf well, he's a salesman. And yeah, so, you right? know, it's like make America great again. Trump buildings are the biggest, best, yeah, most luxurious yeah, in right. the world. So like, best quality and the way, everything. Yeah. The post office they were renovated is the biggest, grandest, most greatest hotel in the world. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like everything. It's yeah. in- Russia's going to encounter like a, a retaliation like they've never seen before. Like yeah. So like, I mean, like his personality and the way he's gone about things also makes it where like you can't, you don't know if what he's saying is actually like true or he just i got a red button on my desk yeah. and it's much bigger than kim jong-un's and it works yeah <laughs> let this be like a, a lesson you know like how you it sounds like a circus how you like honor china yeah like it's it's funny and stuff but like you know <laughs> <laughs> like i don't know what i don't know what to take seriously when trump opens his mouth because Everything is He's the greatest show on earth. <laughs> yeah. The bottom line is he, when he runs again, it's like the media is just going to yeah. cover him relentlessly. Yeah. It's great for actually, their ratings. Everybody will yeah. have to tune C- in. CNN actually does way better when Trump yeah. is around. Hmm. Continuing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. That's that's too Before I was so rude. And no. <laughs> the news prompted Hillary Clinton to repudiate it as a phony scandal during her speech at the 2022 New York State Democratic Convention. Clinton claimed Durham's findings are a right-wing lie meant to distract from Trump's scandals. She said, quote, and we can't get distracted, whether it's by the latest culture war nonsense or some new right-wing lie on Fox or Facebook, by the way they have been coming after me again in case you might have noticed, it's funny. The more trouble Trump gets into, the wilder the charges and conspiracy theories about me seem to get, end quote. MSNBC and CNN have largely ignored the revelation. Yeah, all media is narrative. And so stuff like that, Hillary Clinton can say something. She can label things that she doesn't like. I mean, all the politicians do that and utter these platitudes. And the people in the media just go, oh, well, this is what Hillary Clinton said. And, and then they just move on. They don't challenge her. They don't say that that's bullshit or say that, you know, talk about any of the things that she did with the the Durham investigation or the Russia, you know, the, the, the whole collusion hoax thing. And so the average person who's got maybe five, 10 minutes to catch a few minutes of news after they work their ass off all day and come home at night. They turn on their favorite network and, you know, most of them lean, lean left and they get some sanitized version of orange man bad. Harry Clinton is a poor victim. And that if they believe the news, which still way too many do, then that becomes a narrative. That becomes what most people believe. And then the media is successful at propagandizing people to believe something that's completely untrue. And believe something that is true as being untrue. So people dismiss it. Like so when Trump said Obama and Hillary, they all spied on me. It was, oh, there's no way. Even on a 60 yeah. Minutes interview with uh, yeah. Leslie, uh, what was her name? Yeah. Leslie Stahl. Leslie Stahl. She's like, there's no evidence yeah. of that. And Trump's <laughs> yeah. like, there's evidence everywhere. Yeah. And she's like, there is not. I'm, this is 60 Minutes and you can't say yeah, that. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah. and it's just. Because she didn't do any journalizing. She comes with what she heard in her little liberal bubble and assumes that she, the perception that she's been propagandized by, she doesn't do any journalism. So how can she possibly know? And then so she challenges Trump. And here we are several years, three, four years down the road after that interview. And, you know, she hasn't said, oops, sorry, I was wrong. Didn't do my job. She's just on the next story. She doesn't care. She hates Trump. She loves Hillary. 
don't know if anybody loves Hillary. People hate Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, what's his name? Pete Davidson. Well, most of Hillary. the people on the news and the media, they all love Hillary. So, so what seems to be the most, because it seems like there's a bias in the media. It seems like there's a bias in politics. There's a bias with the FBI. There's a bias mm-hmm. with the judges who are supposed to be enforcing the laws as they're written, right, or close to it. They're not necessarily suggestions, but they're supposed to be following that. So what what is the underlying consistency in the bias? Like, what is it that in, that's influencing everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people, to to go more left? Stronger federalized power, central power. Is that what it is? Yeah. What else could it possibly be? That's causing people to move left? Well, I mean, at the end of the day, what you observe, you participate in. And so the news, again, all media is narrative. So... If most of the people are consuming media, news, information from left-leaning sources, then they're setting the narrative. And you hear something enough over and over and over again, just like a television commercial, just like these platitudes over and over and over again, you label something that. And eventually, with enough time, people start to believe it, just like with the Palestinian things. The communists work with the Palestinians and just say, hey, they stole our country and just keep repeating the life decade after decade. And what happens is the future generations grow up from little kids and they're hearing the propaganda and the lie. And the older people that know the truth, well, they've long since died out. And so nowadays they think, oh, Palestine's is stolen land. And then when you, you look into history, it's the propaganda, the lie that the communists, the Soviets work with, the Palestinian Authority started back was in the late 40s, early 50s. 60s i think it was and like because it's so many decades later it's like your generation you have you've just heard the propaganda because all the people that knew the truth have since died out it's pretty young yeah the other one too um like i for for the longest time i thought i was like socially liberal right and then i have no idea what being liberal is anymore. I just, it just, it's, it's moved so much. Like I, I'm not even sure. Uh, but, but like a lot of the ideas that I see now that are like liberal ideas right now, you're starting to push closer to like what's going on, like in China, right? Like we're not at a social, social credit score yet, but you need to get people conditioned to a couple other steps before the jump to social credit scores just makes sense. But right? like something uh, in 2020, I heard started getting floated out there was uh, UBI, so Universal Basic Income, right? A lot of like candidates at the time were saying like, they want to implement it starting in California first, right? So basically everyone just gets paid a monthly stipend from the government. And like the justification is uh, we did these studies and, and, and people are just like, they're just better off, like they're happier. And like, you know, like it's something you, you do for the people. And then you can see like, if you're used to like in the information talking about how, um, uh, like love and 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 kindness and and and, and taking care of anyone, everyone, and like privilege and all this other stuff. Like, this is how to make everything like fair. Like, it once you get used to that, then giving out giving everyone a set stipend makes sense, right? And never mind like what it's doing to people's ability to work and produce value, right? So they, they have less of incentive to be useful. But also like, what's what about just the economy as a whole? Like when you're when you're having a significant portion of your population, they don't have to do anything, right? It's, it becomes a burden on the people that are doing stuff. And, and, and like, that's, that's like some of the I, I, ideals and socialism that, that uh, people just think everyone's just gonna do their share and contribute. And then you actually try to put it into practice with like a communist government and you see what happens, right? Like it's, you just get a mafia yeah. class that runs your country that you can't get rid yeah, of. Yeah, so like you're talking about like what's the incentive? Like I don't know. There's something that's been going on, especially like it's, it's accelerated in the last like ten years, where what it means to be liberal has changed completely. You know, and and yeah, I, I I used to think it's just like you know what you're okay with people being gay. That's their choice. You leave them alone. Uh, people want to uh, decide what they want to do with their body, like or what like when they have kids. That's that's their that's their problem. I thought that's about it, right? And now it's like. If you say that, I probably just offended liberals. Right? I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know. I just been know so it is like radicalized. Yeah, even like it? if you're a liberal before, yeah. and you're not in the eyes of the radicals. You're not a liberal, and you're part of the problem. If yeah. you're not just on that forefront, and you're the most radical, then you're not enough. 
it's yeah. kind of crazy. It's just kind of yeah, exacerbated the problem. Yeah. So, and then like, and that is just a step closer to like what, what like, an actual socialist, like. And ideals. the problem is with the radicals is they think they're right. They're just too inept to see their own flaws. They think of themselves as flawless and doing the good. That's why they're so hell bent on their doing their ways. Cause they truly think they're doing good. But they just don't have the capacity yeah, to reflect like, on their own thoughts. It's like, oh, maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I, I don't have the perfect diet solution for everything. They tune everything out and only listen to themselves. Yeah, because you, you can see it, right? Because it's like... That's any really, radical, though. It's not they, just a they left. They really believe that's actually the what's helping in the world. And it's, yeah. like, it's making the world a better place. You know, it's... And they see yeah. everything else as evil. That's why they go through such extreme radical measures because they think it's warranted. Because they truly believe they're doing good when they're, yeah. when you they don't even question it. They don't even. That's I think that's the true problem, and that's on with every every radical. Yeah, and you can actually see it, right where we could like we could put it like through like another like lens. Right? It's a lot of this being liberal. It used to be about like love and acceptance, right? And then now like the motivation is more like guilt and shame, and and then. Even like in some cases, like they're okay with force or like forcing people to get a vaccine or force people to do whatever. Like name one instance in the history of humankind where guilt, shame and force. Basically using one of those three to change people's action. It actually had like a net positive effect. It just doesn't. Yeah, like that does. Exactly. That's a great that point. Isn't going to work. Yeah. Right. And like if you're for like love and, and, and changing the world and like making it a better place. Like using guilt, shame, and force is not going to accomplish that. So, if like what you think, what you're supporting, is based on one of those three or combination, like, you know, it's time to wake up. Yeah, yeah.